Puffy. My cat is trying to eat my food. Hmm? Hmm. Potentially a 12 hour stream soon. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Almost kill me. Hmm. Before you reverting, rating from one to five, how's your social life? Okay. Definitely, yeah, Islam definitely took a huge toll on my social life, but I live in Canada. So like the only fun things to do in Canada are haram activities like drinking, going to the club, parties, stuff like that. Um, and so like, while I didn't lose any of my friends, I don't do much with them anymore because they are into doing things that I can no longer do. But that's not to say like, I could have a good social life. It's just, I'm not actively looking where I should be. Like if I went to the mosque and found myself sisters to be friends with, I would have a social life. I just like, I'm so busy. I personally just haven't really felt the need or the time to go out and make friends. Uh, did you used to swear? I still swear. Um, unfortunately, I have a very, very bad trekker's mouth. It's pretty common in Canada. Um, did you read 929 Yeah, Mark. So when you look, so it, <laughs> when you look at the chapter, you notice how the chapter is all chapter 9, Surah 9. That means that the verses that you're going to try to make a corrupt in the Quran, they're coming from the same chapter, which means you're probably taking those verses out of context. I imagine it has something to do with violence. And if there's violence in the Quran, it is usually talked about in a war setting. So in a setting where you are being attacked or where um, you're a politician and you're preparing for war, there are specific rules uh, regarding how you fight other people um, and how you defend yourself. Do you live in Toronto? I live in Saskatchewan. How was your Eid? My Eid was really good. Um, I, I didn't do anything at all. I just kind of hung out, laid around in bed, and honestly, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Um, next year, I plan to actually do Eid, like, stuff. Like, I want to actually, like, have an Eid dinner, but um, I didn't do anything this year, and that was okay. Did you feel really covered and private when you started wearing hijab and abaya? Yeah, so I have a really bad reputation here in Regina. I used to, um, I used to get around, honestly. Um, I dressed extremely inappropriate. I acted inappropriate. I did things that I felt, I basically did whatever I wanted. So when I started to cover and stuff, like it was something I didn't think I'd enjoy. I thought that like showing off my body and being naked essentially was like the only way for me to get the attention I wanted, get the satisfaction I wanted from the public. Um, so I was extremely pleasantly surprised at like how attracted I was to uh, Islamic clothing. So like, I really, really enjoyed it. I started wearing the hijab before I even took my shahada. I just really liked the way it looked. Um, and when I had actually started to wear the clothing, like just the way that I was treated was so different in a good way. You know, it, it was like I was, instead of men staring at me in like lust, you know, when I was getting that attention, men stared and then looked away in a form of respect, you know? So it wasn't that like I was no longer getting the attention I wanted. It was, it was that like the attention was respectful, I guess. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised um, with changing the way I dress and I would not go back. Um, what made you choose Islam? Yeah, so um, my brother passing away was kind of what made me find Islam. Um, I don't like when people ask me why I chose Islam because I didn't. You know, you can't, ch you can't choose what you believe in. I've always believed in God, but Christianity didn't make sense to me. Catholicism, the Bible didn't make sense to me. I couldn't be a Jew because I believed in Jesus. So it was kind of, I found Islam um, through my own personal research but uh, I didn't really choose it, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, 
Would you want to leave Canada? Yeah, Canada is so bad. It's not a good place to live anymore. Um, the economy is terrible. I would not, if it wasn't for my papa living here, um, I love my dad so much. Um, if it wasn't for him here, uh, I probably already would have left. What was the biggest deciding factor? Um, so the miracle, I, I had witnessed a miracle after going to read the Quran for the first time. And I hadn't even read the Quran before I knew I was going to convert. Like there was nothing in the Quran that you could show me that would make me turn away. Where'd you want to travel to? Oh, anywhere. Honestly, I would travel anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> Um, I love traveling. I love seeing the world. What was the miracle? Essentially, I'm not going to go into detail just because like I really struggled to describe it. But essentially what had happened was I went to go read the Quran and when I had like an app on my phone and when I clicked on the app and I went to go start reading the Fatia, um, I like essentially was like taken somewhere else. Like I had went into like some sort of trance and it was only like a f f half a second, but it felt like hours. And, um, I essentially had seen, you know, my brother who I had feared, I was fearing for him. That's why I looked for religion. When I had f went into that trance, like I had seen him and I had seen like the smile on his face that like I couldn't, I've never seen on him before. And like the entire experience was, it felt like I was literally somewhere else. Like it was warmer and everything just felt peaceful. And I just felt different when I came out of that like trance I had like obtained knowledge I didn't have before and like all of the feelings I had towards Christianity were no longer negative you know all of the fear I had for my brother was no longer fear um I was no longer angry with my family for like you know addiction is hard and my family ended up you know uh cutting my brother off by the end so he was alone essentially when he died and I was very angry about that but that was gone like I just I had a complete emotional shift in a matter of seconds the moment that I had looked at the Alfathia Um, and so with that, I always say like, people always say like, oh, like pray for your brother, pray for your brother. Well, yeah, like I, I try to, um, <sighs> my brother is fine. You know, I know my brother is fine. I believe that that was kind of the message essentially was your brother's okay. And the only way for you to ever see him again is to convert was essentially kind of the message I got out of that miracle. I meant which country would you want to live in? Mm, I haven't decided yet. Malaysia definitely is a good option. Was your brother Muslim? No, he was not Muslim, Abu. He, uh... Oh, Radek, I'm sorry for your loss. It's not easy. It almost, it almost, uh, almost killed me. Tattoos, piercing, makeup, social media, looks like Muslim talk. I'm not wearing makeup. Um, piercings are halal. Um, I got my tattoos before I reverted and, uh, as long as women are allowed, as long as men are allowed on social media, women are allowed on social media as well. So Ligma, and if you don't know what Ligma means, look it up. Are you single? Yes, I'm not ready to mingle. What was your parents' reaction? They were scared for me. They thought I was putting myself like in danger, but once I kind of like destigmatized Islam for them, they started to just whatever kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Have you ever had this strange feeling of something striking inside your chest while reading certain ayahs? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's something so peaceful about the Quran, but then there's also obviously, yeah, there's verses that just immediately, like, they just, they hit you really deep in the core. And I find, like, when that happens, I always, I kind of take it as a sign, like, that's something I need to really look at with those verses. Those verses, it's like you look at it and maybe um, it's trying to say something. Did you finish reading the Quran cover to cover? I'm on my fifth read of the Quran. How much mare do you want? Three million. Um, my mare is three million. 
How old were you when you converted? Um, I converted last year, so I was 20, but I had been looking into Islam since I was like 18, 19. Are you going to move to an Arab country? I'm not sure, probably not. Three million pesos. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Can you recite the Surah Al-Fatiha, please? I can't, I can't, I'm too nervous. My Arabic is just so, so bad. Um, my Arabic is just so, so bad. Um, How many times have you read the Quran? I have read the Quran four times. I am currently reading it for the fifth. Oh, um, I can give you uh, my shahada. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm not gonna give the fatia. I just, uh, 